Hey everyone, welcome back to the TTA Performance YouTube channel. Uh, today we have my 81 Turbo Trans Am up on the lift because we're going to be installing uh, the next modification to the turbo, which is a larger uh, exhaust turbine housing and a 3 inch downpipe that we're going to fabricate for it. But a little bit of an update on the car. So during six summer drag and drive event that happened to come through Great Lakes Dragway uh, here in Union Grove, Wisconsin, where my local home track, um, that week we went and checked it out and in the evening they had their normal uh, routine of bracket racing on a Wednesday night and we went out there and unexpectedly the car ran a new personal best. Now I didn't e expect that to happen. I didn't have, uh, I didn't video record anything going on. We were just there having fun, running bracket and whatever and the car happened to go its best of a 1269 at Pretty close to 106 miles an hour now that was totally off the wall did not uh, expect that to happen um, the only mods from our previous best of a 1285 uh, which happened I believe last year the only mods that we did was the compressor wheel got upgraded to what we normally put in our stage 5 turbo uh, when the, this prototype turbo was made it did not have the the larger compressor wheel that we normally put in them so i did have that put in so it was a true stage five like we sell to everyone um but then uh of course then we did the electric fan i don't know how much horsepower savings there actually was from the electric fan i don't know if we really gained much with the larger compressor wheel maybe a small amount uh but it definitely i don't know it went faster so uh, I do have a time slip showing it, 1269, like I said, just over 105, almost 106. Uh, but some of the things that we've done since then uh, was I was able to measure back pressure at uh, the up pipe feeding the turbo. I put a pressure transducer on there and actually wired it into the Holly Sniper so that the Holly Sniper could data log the um, exhaust back pressure, pre-turbine pressure, whatever you want to call it. And in doing so, we're actually under uh, a 2 to 1 pressure ratio. We're somewhere in the 1.7 to 1 uh, pressure ratio. And I'll, I'll go over that later, show you the data logs and so on. So the next mod that I want to do with the car, and that's why it's in right now, is that we're going to upgrade the turbine housing to uh, a 101 AR housing over to stock 0.82. It's going to allow for a 3-inch downpipe now that we're going to fabricate. Uh, this is a non-wastegate housing so there's not a external wastegate or sorry internal wastegate on it like the factory anymore but this car set up with an external wastegate anyway so it doesn't matter but i'll show you all that stuff also uh, so we're going to get to it start disassembling and start converting it over all right turbo's off and so what we're going to do here is we have this larger 101 ar housing like i said the stock one is 0.82 and I don't know if we can, it's written on there somewhere. What that means uh, is basically the AR is area to radius. So basically it has the, the housing itself, the, the curve shape to it, the radius of it, and the area inside of it. Basically it's like a, a, a tapered cone that's wrapped around uh, some sort of axis, I guess you can say. Some people have use the analogy that it's like taking a, a a road cone and having the big end over here and then wrapping it around an axis and you know it just gets smaller as you get there and that's what's actually driving the exhaust wheel inside so this ratio this is a larger housing basically and like i said before this is going to have a three inch v-band clamp downpipe that we're going to make for it we also have a v-band clamp inlet uh to modify we have to modify the piping to work and then there's no wastegate anymore this this was only on here to hold my wastegate closed because i don't use this wastegate i've got an external one but we're going to get the old housing off and get this new one put on and start uh getting everything reassembled so we can start creating a three inch downpipe for it all right in process got the uh, turbo on large housing on now that is our stock stage 5 exhaust wheel, this is our, it's for our uh, standard stage 5 wheel. This is just the 3 inch uh, V-band clamp outlet, just, you can see it makes it look so much larger. Um, 
And we have, we've already welded up the adapter for the V-band on the inlet from our uh, tube from our header system. So now we're going to start fabricating a three inch downpipe. Not sure which way I want to go yet. Figure it out as we go. Uh, if I want to keep in the stock location and go straight down. Or I'm thinking, or do I try to go out the fender well a little bit? But um, we'll see. We'll see where it goes from here. But I'm getting excited because that looks really cool. All right, keep working. So here we have the three inch downpipe all welded up. So what I decided to do, and I'll, I'll mock this up here. It's pretty simple actually. Uh, three inch uh, off the turbo. And it pretty much just goes straight down. And there's a 90 under the control arm goes back and what I decided to try to do was actually make like a cutout. So I've got a V-band clamp on the end there that's pointing out to the side of the uh, car. Well, it's gonna be on the inside of the frame rail, so it's it's under the car, but I'm gonna have a cap uh, over there. And then we have a two and a half inch um, kind of split off here to connect to the rest of the exhaust under the car so that we can uh, still run it through the tailpipes but then uncap it if we're racing at the track or whatever. Just trying it out. Not sure if it's really going to make a difference or not. But uh, I decided to get this on, get this installed. We got the O2 sensor bung uh, welded in there also for the fuel injection. But, uh, but that's it, 3 inch mandrel bent. And we'll get this installed next. All right, down pipe installed. So we have a V-band clamp right here next to the header so we can get the downpipe out if need be. Um, it's a tight fit, but it's for experimenting or experimental purposes. Um, I did put heat wrap on the pipe. Usually I don't do that because I'm not a big fan of that stuff. Not that it doesn't work, more concerned with fluids getting on it and it catching on fire. But because we're kind of close to some brake lines and some transmission cooler lines and some spark plug wires and stuff, I decided to put it on. And then we have our three inch pipe going all the way back, our splitter to go off to the exhaust, excuse all the oil leaks. Um, and then we have, uh, this is gonna be capped off. This is our cutout. So we're gonna put a, make a cap for that for the mating end of it, but uh, for now, maybe we'll just leave it open and see how it sounds and see how it performs. All right, top side. And sorry for the ugliness, you know, it is just a test mule at this point. But uh, got the wrapped 3-inch downpipe V-band clamped uh, to the, the turbo going straight down. It's a little tight fit for the way I designed it. Got the oxygen sensor in it for the Holly Sniper. This This is actually... What I'm using for my pressure transducer um, to uh, measure back pressure, I, I don't have it hooked up all the time. I only hook it up when I'm actually trying to record. But uh, yeah, we're going to see how this does. Probably at the next track outing, we'll see what it does under boost, if we reduce that back pressure or not, and then we'll go from there. But uh, yeah, so far so good. Okay, so I have up uh, the data log from my Holly Sniper. This was on a drag strip pass on uh, June 28th. And some of the things that we can see here is that uh, I have RPM, I have uh, TPS or throttle position, I have the exhaust back pressure transducer, and I have boost pressure. Uh, I have them checked on right now to show the lines. 
I'm going to turn off the TPS and the RPM so that we can just focus on the yellow line, which is exhaust back pressure, and then the um, light blue line here, which is the actual boost pressure. And as we can see, as we go through the RPM, um, we have, man, just kind of uh, toggling through, back pressure is around 28, 26 and a half to 28 PSI. It's very fast sampling rate, so you can, you know, it kind of fluctuates uh, rather quickly. I try to look at it as an average. I would probably say at the very high end there, this would be towards the end of the run. You can see that we're at almost 5,000 RPM. Um, somewhere, you know, even that one almost hit 30. Uh, but I don't know what you'd call that on average. Somewhere around, let's say, 28, 27 to 28. Um, boost pressure, the one right below it, you know, we're looking at 16, 17-ish, maybe 16 and a half on average. So if we say... And just kind of taking an educated guess at it. Let's say it's 27 PSI of back pressure and about 16 and a half PSI of boost pressure. So if we bring up a calculator and we divide the uh, 28 PSI of back pressure by the 16 and a half PSI of boost pressure, we get a 1.7, we'll say, uh, pressure ratio basically a boost pressure to back pressure ratio, 1.7. Now, the lower this number, the better, usually, as far as making power. Um, some people will say that that number becomes lower, you start to get into more lag. Basically, if we can reduce the back pressure and get the back pressure closer to equaling the boost pressure, well, then you're almost at like a naturally aspirated type situation where the exhaust restriction isn't as bad. Why are we concerned about exhaust restriction? The turbo is in the exhaust plumbing. It's creating a, um, uh, a resistance or a restriction in there. You know, we have, we have this back pressure. Some people call it turbine drive pressure. Like, well, you need that to get the turbo to, to spin. Um, <clears throat> usually if this pressure ratio number is higher, you will get faster acting turbo response. Basically, it'll come on to boost quicker, but you end up with uh, what I call an EGR effect, and that restriction becomes a problem and actually limits uh, power, especially up top. Now, every time I've done a modification on the exhaust side of the turbo and freed up the exhaust side uh, of this engine for the turbo, whether it be the turbo, the downpipe, whatever, um, it seems to have made more power at the same boost pressure. So I kept focusing on that, and I kept, that's why I'm experimenting with it now. So in this application right now, or what, what's been done to the car for this run to have this 1.7 uh, pressure ratio, this is with our Stage 5 turbo with a stock turbine housing the stock 0.82 AR turbine housing and with our two and a half inch mandrel bent downpipe and no restriction in the exhaust. I don't run a catalytic converter. I don't run the mufflers. It is all straight pipe after the turbo. Um, so that was kind of the baseline for the stage five. We do have this larger stage five exhaust wheel in it, which does reduce the back pressure. So let's take a look now because um, I have my other data log, which has the, this was on the, this was on the street. I just kind of, uh, made a hit with it. And so, um, we'll focus, let's turn the TPS back on so we can, this was a large data log. So I got to highlight now here's one. Unfortunately, I don't know what I did here. I must've let off the throttle. Because at one point I was at 79% throttle, and as a, as the RPM was going up, I started to back off the throttle a little bit. You can see I kicked it back up in the end there to about 70%. I don't know if I just didn't have my foot in it all the way, if I don't know why I partially lifted or, or what had happened there. But um, this is where we're mainly focused right here with the, the boost pressure uh, and back pressure. Now, this is with the 101 AR housing. 
and the three inch downpipe. Still the same stage five exhaust wheel as a previous data log. So nothing's changed on the turbo other than the actual exhaust housing and the downpipe. Um, and as you can see here, these lines are much closer together. <laughs> and looking at the very top side of this, again, we're going to try to look at the averages while we're, you know, looking at these numbers here on the back pressure and boost pressure. But um, I would say, well, it looks like the boost pressure is pretty close to what I had on the last one. We'll say 16 and a half again. And look at my back pressures. They're low 20s. Before I was in the high 20s. So I would say on average, this is probably 20 PSI, somewhere in that range. I mean, even if we wanted to skew the number and go to the high side and say 21. So let's just use those numbers and see what we get. So uh, we're going to do, let's say 21 PSI of back pressure and divide that by that same 16 and a half PSI. We're down to 1.27. We went from 1.7 to 1.27 on that back pressure that is that's a pretty decent drop that's a pretty decent drop um next step of course is going to be we're going to test this at uh, at the track mind you this test was done with the cutout open so it was just a straight three inch mandrel bent downpipe with no restriction <laughs> it was basically just cut i mean it, it exited about the middle of the passenger door um so definitely an improvement there on back pressure. Uh, let's see if it equates to more horsepower or better, better quarter mile time numbers. I'm not really noticing lag. Yeah, I got to stop the video there. Um, so even though it shows that there was a reduction in exhaust back pressure to the turbo, um, the reality is it really made it lazy, <laughs> uh, trying to build any kind of boost with my foot on the brake, like I was doing at the drag strip or even on the street, really. Uh, yeah, it, the, the boost response, it was, it was not there. We did increase lag dramatically. It was hard to leave on boost. Um, but we kind of, remedied that but i'm not going to show that now we're actually going to get that on the next video and we'll go over some things about how you can overcome that that boost response issue when the turbo is actually too big on the exhaust side but be sure to tune in for the next one we'll go over all of that and how i kind of remedied it but thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time